If you think that Kirby in the Forgotten Land was the first 3D Kirby, think again. Because Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards, beat it by over 20 years. Okay, so maybe it's actually more 2.5D than proper 3D as it's still entirely a side-scrolling adventure, but it still makes some pretty creative use of that extra half dimension. And now that it's back via the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack, I wanted to find out if Kirby's first pseudo 3D adventure withstands the test of time, or if it might be better off left as a real forgotten land. Hey, I'm Andre, and this is Game Explains Retro Review of Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards. In a world where anything is possible, one pink puff must achieve the impossible. Starring Kirby! <laughs> Volcano Kirby, Refrigerator Kirby, Firework Kirby, Jedi Kirby, Light Bulb Kirby, Snow Kirby, Body Horror Kirby, Canadian Kirby, and 27 other Kirbys. Kirby 64, where dreams land. Whoa, I don't know what that was about. But anyways, Kirby 64 might look like a typical 2D Kirby on the surface. I mean, he can jump, he can fly, and he can suck up enemies to steal their identities. You know, the standard Kirby stuff. But this time, he can do something that remains unique even 20 years later. Combining copy abilities. All you have to do is spit one enemy with a copy ability at another to create an entirely new one. And the results can be shocking or illuminating, or maybe just cool. You get the picture. Point is, there's a lot of combinations, and it's just fun to experiment and see what can happen by mixing two random ones together, like some kind of insane Kirby alchemist. And nearly every result looks and feels entirely unique, whether it's tearing through the air as a fireball, or turning into a rock monster, or drilling through enemies, or tossing food as a refrigerator. Even 20 years and countless games later, all the different combo abilities still stand out for being unique. Although it is fun to see how a couple of powers here may have influenced later games. Like how the drill and light bulb here both seem pretty similar to ones found in Kirby the Forgotten Land. But with each copy ability only having a very basic attack or two, there just isn't that much depth to them. And you'll likely be looking to switch it up after a minute or two. And even with there being 35 copy abilities in total, you'll likely have seen most of them after just a couple of hours. So it's probably a good thing that a standard playthrough will only take you about 5 hours or less. Though make sure to tack on a few more if you plan on going for 100% by finding all the crystal shards. There's three of them in every stage, and most of them aren't too hard to find. Although there is the occasional deviously hidden one. However, some of them annoyingly require a specific copy ability to break them free. And I grew to hate them, as not only did the required copy ability feel completely arbitrary, but the game doesn't even provide a clue as to which power you'll need until it's too late, which requires you to replay the entire stage. In any case, while each copy ability does feel unique, it otherwise doesn't really matter all that much which one you use, as just about any of them can defeat an enemy with a single hit. So it really comes down more to personal preference than any actual strategy in most cases. Despite that, the game can be oddly difficult at times, which I partially attribute to the overall imprecise feel. And that's partly because of the dynamic camera, which tries to offer something a little more exciting than your standard profile view, as it moves around over the course of the stage for shots from above, behind, and even in front of Kirby. But it comes at the cost of readability, making it harder to accurately gauge distances or spot enemies. And it doesn't help that Kirby just feels slow overall, even by Kirby's standards. <laughs> yeah, that's him running at top speed. <laughs> it seems like more of a light power walk. And not only can it make dodging fast-paced enemies a little tougher, but it also makes the overall game feel sluggish, and even a little boring. Of course, it doesn't help that the frequent mid-boss fights grind the game's pace to a halt, given that they offer little challenge with most of them just sitting there doing nothing. And I also have to mention the annoying one-hit kills, like when being squished, which can happen unusually easily for a game like this. As for the levels themselves, well they're not bad per se, but the plotting pace doesn't exactly work in their favor, even if it did give me plenty of time to appreciate the cute visuals. I really like this minimalist forest here. And to be fair, the game does try to mix up the gameplay, such as with the odd minecart ride, which are pretty fun, or these segments where you ride King Dedede around and get to swing his hammer. And yes, the real boss fights are actually pretty great, including a few that do some really cool things in the 3D space all the while staying faithful to its side-scrolling roots. Fortunately, the overall presentation is simply lovely. The visuals are still appealing in a simplistic kind of way, the music is a treat to the ears,
The invincibility theme did not need to go that hard. And I love some of the smaller details, like how Waddle Dee sticks his head out here after helping out. And there's an abundance of adorable cutscenes throughout the game. All of which, by the way, run at 60 frames per second instead of the usual 30 for the rest of the game. And I have to say, those are some pretty nice character models for Nintendo 64. Yeah, Kirby himself may look a little off-model these days, but look at how round he is! So even though Kirby 64 probably didn't push the Nintendo 64 to its limits, its visuals might actually hold up better for that exact reason compared to most other games of its era. But for as cute and charming as Kirby 64 can be, it's not enough to offset the dullness that starts to set in after the first few hours. Because once the novelty wears off, you're left with an adventure that just isn't all that fun to play. It's a little too slow and a little too basic. Which is a shame for a game with a premise as exciting as being able to mix copy abilities. To be honest, my favorite part of the game isn't even in the main adventure. Instead, it's the three minigames that are available from the very start. They're all extremely simple, think Mario Party levels here, but they can be surprisingly addictive. In 100 Yard Hop, it's a race to the finish as you try to avoid obstacles by carefully jumping one or two spaces at a time, and it can get intense. Whereas Bumper Crop Bump is a little slower paced as you try and push and shove past each other to catch the most falling fruit. But my favorite of the three has to be Fall Guys. Or, sorry, Checkerboard Chase, where you attack by trying to drop tiles from underneath your opponents, while trying to avoid befalling the same fate. It has just enough depth to keep you coming back for one more game, time and time again. So overall, I'm a bit mixed on Kirby 64. It's not that the game itself hasn't aged well, in fact some parts have actually aged pretty gracefully, it's more that the core design has always been a bit flawed, being just a little too simplistic to hold my interest for long. And when combined with a plodding pace, it can feel like a repetitive chore at times, which is probably why I was never able to finish the game until now, when I basically had to. But even so, it's arguably still worth checking out, at least for a few minutes for hardcore Kirby fans, to at least see some of those truly wild combo abilities. Or for anyone else looking for some quick Mario Party-like fun. Those minigames are seriously a blast. I just wish there were more of them. And with that, thank you so much for watching Game Explains Retro Review of Kirby 64. But hey, you don't have to take my word for it, so let us know your thoughts on Kirby 64 in the comments below. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and of course make sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more retro reviews and everything else Nintendo too. We'll catch you later. Bye everyone!